Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cotech Holdings Live Investment Summit today, hosted by SIX. I'm pleased to introduce the president, CEO, and director of Cotech, Julian Traeger. Julian is going to walk us through a company presentation, and after, we'll be taking questions live. Remember that you can submit your questions using the Q&A panel found on the right-hand side of your screen at any point during today's presentation. And as always, this event is being recorded, and it'll be available to watch on SIX.com in the coming days. Without further ado, Julian, I'd like to hand things over to you and get us started. Great. Thank you very much, Cam. And thank you all um, who are attending for your time and interest in Kotec. Um, we're super excited about this business, which is effectively a new concept for commodity extraction, um, as you'll see during the course of the presentation. Uh, and initially, I thought I would introduce myself and a bit talk a bit about my track record. Then we can talk about the concept behind Kotec, and then we'll canter through the presentation. And as Cam said, we'll end with um, a Q&A session. So why don't we start with a bit about my background and why Kotec and why now? My background is really as a change agent in the natural resources sector. Um, I'm not a, an engineer, uh, but I'm an investor. And I've been investing in this space successfully since 2005. Uh, initially, I invested actually in the um, coking coal sector. I was involved uh, with Brahm um, in rescuing a company called Western Coal, uh, which was in financial difficulties. And then using the track record and experience that I had as an um, activist investor in the UK, which is uh, my origins, uh, we got involved in refinancing the business, changing its strategy, um, streamlining it and um, uh, expanding the operations. And we were fortunate to sell it for over $3 billion um, at the top of the market. It, it was a company called Western Coal. A number of um, investors in Canada uh, should know it um, uh, with a warm feeling. Um, thereafter, um, I got involved with a streaming and royalty business called Anglo Pacific, which also had a coal asset. Um, <clears throat> when I joined Anglo Pacific, Eight years ago, it had one asset, which was a coking coal royalty in Australia, an income of around $5 million in the first year. Um, I subsequently raised over $500 million for the business and completely uh, changed its focus so that by the time I departed earlier this year, it has around 70% of its assets in battery-facing minerals. And the income this year could be um, you know, well over $150 million, even perhaps $200 million. Um, so an enormous change for that company. Along the way, I was also involved in um, liberating and turning around some copper assets, uh, which uh, we bought from Anglo-American, two mines in Chile. Uh, we purchased for around $300 million, 220 of that in cash, 80 million in a royalty. Um, and um, we raised a billion dollars to expand that business. Um, and we were fortunate to merge it earlier this year with um, Capstone, uh, and it's now named Capstone Copper. Um, we achieved a multiple of several times of our investment. And on the back of that um, sort of realization event, I was thinking about how to continue to make money out of investing in the natural resources and, and, and commodity space. As you can see over the last couple of weeks, commodity prices have gone up um, and they could come down. And so buying mainstream assets is quite a risky business and there is um, a lot of potential downside. Uh, and as you well know, I'm sure the best way of making money in this space is to invest cheaply at the bottom of the market. So I was thinking, what assets are there that um, are still cheap? And the answer, which ties very well into um, the arguments now for a circular economy, are um, marginal assets, uh, which aren't that profitable even at current commodity prices. Uh, waste um, assets, which are often seen as liabilities um, and, and problems. And recycling opportunities. Uh, where um, assets are already um, effectively available, but they have to be reprocessed. Those categories seem still to be quite interesting in terms of the cost of their entry points. And th that is one of the focuses um, of Kotec, as you will see. Uh, the other uh, interesting um, 
observation I had is that our sector um, is is one of the only not to have been completely disrupted by technological innovation. I mean, we obviously know about Tesla, eBay, um, uh, Amazon, um, fintech companies. Most sectors have really been completely changed. The majors in our sector continue to dominate the space as they have for the last couple of decades. Therefore, it strikes me that there's an opportunity for a commodity for a technology focused commodity extraction business to emerge as a disruptor for the sector. Um, and in fact, there are lots of super interesting technologies which have been developed in the various universities and research institutes around the world, but they haven't been adopted by the sector yet, which has been very slow to embrace change. And so the other um, uh, part or a pillar of Kotec is that we are a very technology friendly company. In fact, we are starting with technology and then we are going to move to applying those technologies to assets, the sorts of assets I talked about previously, marginal assets, um, uh, waste, uh, to develop a significant operating business. And so when, when we look at what Kotec is today, we're still a very small um, TSX V listed company, but we have significant ambitions to scale a company which could in due course become a mid-tier uh, disruptor and challenger to the status quo within the um, mining sector. Uh, not so much focusing on mining, uh, which has obviously been the tradition in commodity extraction. Um, our focus will be a lot more on the circular economy on um, recycling and reprocessing, but we do end up intending to have a number of significant assets around the world in safe jurisdictions, which we will operate using the technologies which we have uh, invested in and have the rights to. So, so we're a pretty small company still with significant ambitions. And as you'll see later, uh, we have a very strong uh, board of very experienced people who will assist us in executing on that path. Also for a company which is pretty new, and we only really moved to the TSXV a couple of years, um, uh, months ago, we already have two very interesting investments, uh, which I'll talk about later, where there's a real uplift on our investment cost. And we have two very interesting other investments in the pipeline, which I'll talk about as well, as well as a fascinating funnel of things uh, which we are looking at. All of these technologies <clears throat> um, are technologies which we believe can change the world. They're not um, uh, incremental, they're disruptive, and they have to be um, scalable and have high margins, and most importantly, have asset applicability, because ultimately we want to use those technologies to build an asset-rich commodity extraction business, but at a low entry point. The business at the moment is around 60% still owned by the directors and the management team, but we have big ambitions and we expect to scale the business rapidly over the coming months. So if we then turn to the next slide, you know, we are thinking about the challenges which are facing the globe um, and how a new look commodity extraction business can address those. So there are obviously um, significant issues around global warming, um, around um, you know doing things more efficiently, around using um, less water, um, around waste. Um, and uh, the idea behind Kotec is to provide an answer uh, to all of these um, challenges using technologies. And the technologies that we've uh, in, in, been involved with, as you'll see, um, have a commonality in that they use, you know, less water, less heat. They're much more nimble and, and, and um, modular than historic um, uh, mining or commodity extraction processes. In, in a way, I think the, the, the day when you had to have scale to have economies is changing to the day when you can have technology to have economies. And that's certainly the um, strategy um, 
which which we are adopting and also these new technologies allow you to process commodities at a much much cheaper price and that commonality i think underlies um, a lot of the things that we've done so um, our strategy um, is to acquire stakes in these disruptive technologies uh, that are innovative you know have low carbon footprints disruptive and scalable as i've said and then get rights from those technologies to apply them to various commodity assets um, and we'll talk about later how we've already got a number of these rights and we are starting to develop um, assets um, which use these technologies all of which um, will have uh, valuation uh, positive po increases for Kotec which are way in excess of our current market cap. We continue to focus uh, very much on safe regions so there's no reason to go to um, extreme parts of the world to do these things. There's in fact um, more waste in a lot of the developed economies and recycling opportunities than in emerging opportunities. Um, and as you'll see, um, when we find these opportunities, we propose to joint venture uh, with the owners of these assets um, in, in exchange um, for a share of the profits using uh, the technology as well, uh, which will also have some right um, to the uh, profits on a, on a royalty basis. And in the end, as I said before, um, we want to build a super innovative, scalable business, also a business with a different culture. So the idea behind Kotec is not to be um, like a traditional command and control zero sum mining company. It is to be uh, diverse in terms of gender and race to be um, much more open, more collaborative. Our, our philosophy is we're all facing significant challenges um, as, as, as a planet. Um, and we need to work together uh, to solve those. And together we will be uh, much stronger. Um, so we have a really interesting pipeline of things. Um, when we look at them, uh, we say to one another, you know, is this really going to change the world or is it something that's somewhat marginal? So, um, you know, electrifying a truck um, is being done. We don't see that we can really add value there. And also where there are um, many, many uh, competing technologies, we generally don't go there because it's very difficult to tell which ones are going to um, uh, pre prevail. And we also generally don't go into very early stage technologies, which are very much in the laboratory. There needs to have already been some real um, world applicability uh, because otherwise it can take a very long time to um, get uh, income from these technologies. And, um, you know, one of the interesting things about our way of building businesses is that we will get to PL and income much more quickly than traditional uh, mining development uh, businesses. So, um, with that, perhaps I could talk a little bit about the team. You've heard more than enough about me already. Uh, as I mentioned, Bram Yonkers on the line as well. We've worked together for a very long time since um, Western Coal. He's also been involved in the mining space um, in Canada uh, for, for um, uh, decades. Um, he's also involved with Nevada Copper and involved with Cyprus Resources um, as well. Then we have um, Tom Albanese as a non-exec director. Tom uh, as you may or may not know, used to be the um, CEO of Rio Tinto. Um, he's extremely experienced in many aspects of mining. Um, and obviously, Rio had a venture arm. So when we need to um, check um, certain technologies on a, on a, on a you know, sense basis, he really knows um, a lot instinctively about whether something's really going to be uh, making a difference uh, and viable or not. Um, we also are very pleased to have um, Sharon Fay join us recently as a non-executive director. Sharon was extremely senior um, at Alliance Bernstein um, in charge of equities, but also in charge of um, their sort of green um, uh, uh, efforts 
And so she's really a great asset to us because as you appreciate from what I've been saying already, Kotex sits at the conjunction of, you know, commodity extraction, um, green um, uh, ESG investing um, and technology, which is a really interesting uh, place to be. Um, and the longer we are working at this, the more exciting we are about the potential um, of the business. Um, we also have Lucio Genovese, who's the non-executive chairman, a partner of mine uh, for many years. Initially, he ran the copper business of Glencore. Um, he's now chairman of uh, Forexpo, uh, a large um, iron ore producer out of uh, Ukraine. Uh, but through his uh, Glencore network, has has great um, uh, uh, input as well to um, opportunities for us. John Conlon is also super experienced, um, has been on the board um, for a long time um, and um, knows a lot about mining um, and um, knows a lot of people investing in, in the space. So he can help us, particularly on that side. And then finally, we have um, Margot Nordi as a non-executive director who also in Toronto is well known in the um, natural resources space um, and amongst other things, uh, used to run the uh, natural resources investments for CPP. So it's a very high powered board, which I think signifies the um, level of our ambition um, and um, the way in which we really want to build something significant. And in the couple of months that we've been going, we've really uh, done a lot. We've raised $6 million. We've changed the business. Uh, we invested in uh, our first investment binding solutions, which we'll talk about, um, which has already um, doubled in value. And we have opportunities to invest again at a low price there. Um, we've invested in an um, application, potentially, of binding solutions um, at, a, at a valuation. Um, and the valuation in the short period of time has already more than doubled, um, according to a recent investment by one of the world's leading um, trading houses. And we can talk uh, later about how both of these investments have still enormous potential. Uh, and then we have a heads of agreement with uh, uh, a public company in the UK, which uh, uniquely recycles uh, magnets uh, to extract the rare earths from them. And we have the opportunity to bring that to the US, which we are super excited about. And we're um, starting to explore how to engage with the US government to do that. This technology has already been endorsed in the UK by the UK government and also in Europe by the um, uh, German government, both of whom are building plants. And, and, and we can talk about some of the other um, opportunities in the pipeline which we've developed. So I think in a short period of time, we've, um, we've done quite a lot. Um, and we intend to continue to grow at this space. Um, we're looking at application opportunities on the asset side um, for the technologies we've acquired. Um, the Makanga transaction uh, will be completed. Um, and we're starting, as I said, to talk about how to roll that out in the US. Um, uh, and, um, you know, we will continue to make new investments, uh, which we're pretty excited about as we, as we talk later. Before going into the um, technologies, just a bit about the um, market cap. Honestly, the stock, uh, the market cap is $15 million on a fully diluted basis, $23 million. Um, we can talk about why we think that's significantly undervalued even today. Um, and one, one of the assets which I think is very important to us, which we inherited, was $90 million of accumulative tax losses, which on a on a sort of 20% basis, you know, adds up to already $18 million. So almost the current, uh, more than the current market cap. Um, and then, as I said, these, these two investments we've made already um, have gone up um, quite a lot. So we're, we're pretty happy uh, with uh, the uh, track record we are developing and, um, you know, expect the share price to go up um, further. Um, we have um, some existing commitments, but they can be funded over a long period of time. But, you know, we, we do need to um, grow quite fast to get to the scale, which we think is, is an opportunity for us. Um, and, um, and so we're considering around $35 million of potential investments um, at the moment. 
So I'm conscious of time. Why don't I talk about what's in the ex portfolio and our existing commitment? Um, Binding Solutions, which was our first investment, is we believe the world's leading um, technology for pelletizing and agglomerating um, iron and iron ore related products like vanadium and titanium. Um, we invested um, at a valuation of $70 million, $2 million. Um, uh, a big Japanese trading house um, recently invested um, at a valuation of $130 million. But very excitingly, we think that um, the um, technology can produce a high quality electric arc furnace um, steel, which would be a game changer globally, particularly for automotive manufacturing. And if that's true, um, the business sh should be shortly valued at over $200 million, which would be three times our investment in uh, a matter of um, months. We also have the right, as you'll see at the top of the page um, here, to invest another $2 million, $2 million um, which we can do at a discount. And so if the valuation does get to around um, $200 million, um, our um, investment should be around worth around 10 million US dollars, uh, which uh, together with the tax losses and the NPV of that already is more than the um, current market cap of, of, of the business. And what's very interesting about Binding Solutions, and you'll see here, is that 95% less energy usage, 98% lower carbon dioxide emissions, but also the technology can be used on waste. And Kotec has acquired the right to apply that technology um, in four jurisdictions, which includes Canada. Um, each one of these um, waste opportunities is effectively like a small mine. And we're already in discussions with a number of steel and iron ore producers and would-be producers in Canada, in the Labrador Trife and elsewhere, um, to work with them on their waste. The NPV of any one of these projects would be a multiple of the current Kotec um, market cap. And so we are um, hopeful that within the next two quarters, we'll be able to um, announce one of these. Um, and um, on this page, you can see um, uh, how this makes a difference um, to um, the owners of the waste, reducing the carbon footprint, uh, reducing their liability exposure, etc. So it's, it had a lot of interest from uh, people with um, waste, which we could help um, reprocess. Um, if I move on to um, Magine, um, that is a uh, business in Minnesota. Um, it's a series of um, iron ore deposits, iron ore um, uh, processing businesses to increase the grade, to create lumps, and to create pellets. In total, these um, several plants have had um, almost a billion dollars spent on them, uh, but they went into receivership because they were over leveraged. Um, and we have um, already invested and bought around a 15% stake in the business for around $2 million. As I mentioned, one of the world's leading uh, trading houses has just invested um, at a $30 million pre-money valuation. So that's roughly um, a doubling of our investment. Um, but we think that um, the next round should be, you know, 60 to $100 million. Um, and our stake there also would be then worth um, you know, 10 to 15 million Canadian dollars, which um, which would be another um, place where there's a lot of value. And ultimately, we need to raise um, uh, $80 million to get the thing going. But um, uh, we think that with this investment, uh, we'll be able to um, get close to justifying the original capex of the whole complex. Um, and strategically, it's super important because these will be green inputs into um, steel manufacturing in North America, which will help with, um, you know, U.S. self-sufficiency. The other interesting thing about Magon is we have been testing the Magon material on the Binding Solutions technology. 
um, and um, the initial results are very positive. Um, and so we, we may be able to um, increase the production of pellets in Minnesota, uh, which have a super green, low carbon um, footprint um, as well. So that's, um, uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, and the restart of production is expected um, 24 months after refurbishment. Um, so this is something which can come into uh, production quite quickly and generate um, income um, for us. Um, we are earmarking another five to $10 million for the uh, support of the fundraising as the business gets up and running uh, and also to ensure that we don't get unduly um, diluted. Uh, but as I said, I think uh, the next round of funding should be um, valuing at it between 60 and 100 million dollars uh, and we'll work that out in the um, in the coming months. Uh, the plant has a 14-year um, uh, life of mine at this stage um, and um, and so it will have considerable value. Uh, the next uh, in investment we have made uh, or committed to is uh, the um, rare earth um, magnet recycling technology, uh, which we believe is world changing. Um, again, we've invested and committed um, uh, sort of five to six million dollars to uh, this business, um, but we have the right to bring it exclusively um, to North America. They have a patented process to recycle um, these rare earths that cannot be recycled by other available technologies. Uh, and um, uh, it's pretty um, green. Um, it um, uh, is focusing on an area which um, is obviously of great um, concern to the US, um, both magnets and rare earths. Um, but there's a lot of magnets already used in uh, North America. And so this would be a way to, again, increase self-sufficiency um, of the uh, um, North American area um, from Chinese um, uh, dominance of, of, of magnet and rare earth production. Um, and as I mentioned, both the um, UK and German governments um, are building plants using this technology. We think there'll be enormous traction to do so in North America, and we think it will be a very profitable um, exercise. Um, next, we have on our, on our second commitment, we've committed um, to a fund uh, which is using the technologies and has a link to the, uh, the CSIRO, which is the um, uh, Research Institute in Australia, uh, to use their technology to monetize it. Um, we don't expect a large amount of money to be put into this. But what's interesting, again, is that we have the right to in use the technology and uh, co-invest with the uh, technology in asset applications. Um, and um, uh, we are uh, looking at one of these uh, technologies, which is called Nextdoor, which can sort ore in a superior way using um, magnetic resonance uh, sort of MRI technology um, and it can tell the exact grade of any piece of ore super quickly. Um, and this is a way in which some um, mines which haven't been able to be successful because they have very variable grades um, and they can't control that, uh, we can improve the grades, we can improve, uh, lessen the variability of the grades and make them um, economic and successful. And so that is the way in which we plan to apply these technologies. And we're pretty excited um, about the um, uh, asset application um, of, of the technologies um, from this fund. Um, we also will be, as I mentioned, and we are engaging with a number of um, Canadian um, iron ore and steel companies and also companies in North America about recycling their waste and cleaning up their waste on a joint venture basis. And we are planning to um, rapidly, hopefully within uh, the next couple of quarters, um, secure one of these. And um, we will need some capital to build the plant. Uh, but as I mentioned, the capex associated with these plants is a fraction 
of um, the traditional methodology, and um, and these are going to be much much um, greener. Um, so that is um, one of the other things that we're interested in. And then, um, if we go to the next slide, there are a couple of other super um, uh, exciting uh, investment thematics we're we're exploring um, technologies for green iron ore dust um, uh, or fines for 3D printing. The whole 3D printing uh, world is moving very fast. Cars are being 3D printed. Rockets are being 3D printed. Aeroplanes are being 3D printed. Um, and there's going to be an enormous demand for um, the uh, the powder, uh, which is necessary to do this. And we are looking at uh, green ways to produce this in some volume. We're also looking at applications associated with graphite and graphene in particular um uh you know uh new um ways of fusing graphene with traditional materials to create new alloys which have um interesting um uh, uh features um and um and so that's really um an exciting area and then also um there are a number of ways to produce concrete without heat, uh, which we would like to um, explore bringing to North America. So, you know, these are big issues, um, but we are pretty excited that we can identify and invest in the technologies um, which are solving these and then um, apply them to assets, um, whether, um, you know, it's building a new recycling plant or um, recycling an existing waste dump or getting hold of a previously uneconomic um, uh, mine or copper mine. Um, and with these technologies, unlocking the economic value of the inherent uh, mineralogy in a super green way. And so, and so it's a pretty um, exciting um, story um, and technology. You'll see uh, on the next page the way in which um, you know, we look at um, these technologies, whether they're innovative, whether they're scalable, um, whether there's applicability. And, and of course, um, we are, like anywhere else, we invest in um, technologies which we think are cheap. And so far, uh, within our short life, um, you know, we've doubled and tripled the value of the investments uh, we've made. So, so Kotec is an unusual beast. It starts to some degree with... Um, stakes in technologies, but morphs into an operating uh, business using those technologies in the same way that um, other disruptive challenges um, to um, the incumbents in, you know, in auto manufacturing or fintech start with the technology and then develop a significant um, asset basis. So in conclusion, um, you know, we... Uh, we think this is a, a very exciting uh, story. We've uh, put our money where our mouth is. Uh, not many people know about us yet. We're, we're super small, uh, but it's an opportunity to enter at the ground level. Uh, we think that the uh, share price significantly undervalues the existing portfolio and gives absolutely no value for the potential to apply the technologies um, to assets um, in the waste area, which, as I said, we're exploring, or to build new plants using the technologies to do um, recycling, uh, which I think there's a big market for. Um, and, um, you know, we, we're very excited. We're on this journey, which can both improve the world. Um, so, you know, all the things we do um, make a difference in terms of carbon footprint, um, as I said, use of heat, use of water, um, but also um, make um, considerable money and, and profit um, for the um, for the businesses. Uh, the technologies themselves, each of them are potential IPO opportunities. Um, uh, you know, some of them need to mature, uh, but um, you know, to the extent there are IPOs and SPACs happening in um, 12, 18 months' time, I think Binding Solutions could be one of the first um, to go public. Um, and, uh, you know, that's another potential source of um, of uh, value to our shareholders. We would distribute um, the, those in specie. Ultimately, what we'd like to do is uh, monetize the technologies, but maintain the rights to use them on assets as we scale 
um, our asset business. And as I said, by comparison to many other um, natural resource uh, plays, uh, we think we'll be able to get um, into uh, revenue production and profitability uh, within um, you know two three years, which is pretty quick um, compared to traditional mines, which can take up to twenty years um, to get licensed and and into production. So um, we're pretty excited. Um, we are moving fast, and we'd love to have your uh, support and involvement. And with that, I thank you for your time, and I'll hand back to Cam to monitor the um, Q and A session. Thanks, Cam. Thanks so much, Julian, for the great presentation. I'd like to remind everyone in the audience that you can access the Q&A tab and ask your questions. Uh, found on the right-hand side of your screen, it's beside the general and public chat. But Julian, we've already had a couple of questions come in, so we're going to launch right into it. Brittany wants to know, um, you know, is it your view that a car or a battery company eventually buys these technologies to save money on their supply chain? Um, it is It is perfectly uh, possible. I mean, we are... Um, starting to talk to um, Japanese steel companies and car companies um, about the BSL um, technology. Uh, the higher quality of steel uh, <clears throat> will mean that they'll be able to use the um, um, output for um, making green, green cars. So I think that is certainly um, an area of, uh, of potential uh, down the line. Wonderful. Uh, she actually also has a follow-up question, but do you have a published rubric for how you evaluate technologies to get involved in? Well, uh, as, I, as I said, um, you know, they, they need to, I mean, we did publish something here and that they need to be scalable, they need to be asset um, applications, they need to be high margin, they need to be somewhat um, unique, they need to be uh, disruptive, not um, incremental. Um, you know, they need to solve um, a major problem and they need to be um, somewhat unique and not um, at, at a very, very early stage. So we don't generally want to waste time in laboratories. We want to um, worry about um, them and helping them scale um, and monetize and finance, which is our area of expertise. And they have to have great management and they have to be cheap. Um, so <laughs> all of those things. Um, uh, but um, maybe we should put that on our on our website as uh, as 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 a, as a criteria. Awesome, great, thank you. Uh, but another question coming in from John: Which of your initial investments are you most excited about? Well, I mean, we are excited. We're excited about all of them. I mean, we don't make an investment unless, as I said, we see the scalability. There are different stages. Um, there are things in the pipeline which are which are super exciting um, as well. Um, you know, we generally don't look for situations which are too niche uh, because we really need to scale a, a reasonable business. But something like Binding Solutions, I mean, there's a competitor to Binding Solutions called Jetty Resources. It's currently raising money at $2 billion, um, you know, and we have um, invested in Binding Solutions at $70 million. Um, there, um, you know, as I said, um, the Magon uh, complex hopefully will be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and we have um, at the moment 15% of that. So, you know, we haven't done a lot. We've done a lot in a short time, we're, but we're very careful because roughly 60% of the business is owned by the board, we're investing our own money. Um, so we don't look for things which can be, you know, a double or, or a triple. I mean, we are looking for five, 10x um, investments, and um, all of those have the potential um, of for um, delivering that. Absolutely. John has a follow-up question. Um, how soon can you expect or how soon can uh, people be expecting for you to begin generating cash flow from your, from your portfolio? <clears throat> but as I said, um, I mean, there are two different types of cash flow that we uh, can expect. One would be um, monetizing technologies and uh, and that should start to happen in 18 months time. Um, but I think in terms of, um, you know, turning around um, poorly performing um, marginal operating businesses or um, investing in uh, recycling plants or reprocessing opportunities, it's really 
you know, 24 to 30 months out. Uh, but that's much quicker than a traditional mining company would be able to generate cash flow. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, where do you see the big gains in valuation coming from? Is it holding these investments or is it applying these technologies to assets? Ultimately, it's applying the technologies to assets. Um, I mean, that's definitely uh, where we can really grow a huge business. Um, but that requires capital and we don't have much capital yet. So um, we will need to raise the capital to do that. But um, even the technologies themselves, you know, I'm encouraging them to take more principal um, risk because uh, just um, licensing doesn't really capture the enormous value which we think is there for a disruptive technology uh, which can really liberate a lot of value um, from um, assets which aren't considered to be um, of great worth. So the asset side is absolutely where we, we aim to go, but we need to enter the asset side through the technology, which is why we're starting in this way. Right, for sure. Are you planning to make larger investments versus the, uh, the toll hold investments that you've done so far? Absolutely. I mean, ultimately, we, we need to become an operating business. We need to have um, control or you know, joint control um, of the assets we are investing in. Um, so that will be uh, the next stage. Um, I think realistically, that's probably something to start doing next year. I think we want to make a couple more technology investments this year um, and continue to follow the um, stakes we've already acquired. But um, we don't want to be a holding company uh, of, venture, of venture capital stakes in, in, in technologies or minority stakes in operating businesses. Um, you know, that will lead to a discount. Ultimately, we need to move to being the operator. And we have a great track record, you know, as operators in unlocking value and turning around businesses. Um, and so that's our core competency as well. Is it likely that companies will require these technologies in a down market to help cut costs? I, absolutely. I mean, these technologies are much cheaper. That's one of the commonalities. They, they obviously also have a much lower carbon uh, footprint. So as a carbon tax comes in, uh, that's another way in which they can help the companies reduce their costs. And um, you know, in this period of higher inflation, higher cost inflation, um, potential pressure on demand, um, I think the impetus to um, use technology to protect your business is going to increase, if anything. Um, it's not a time to be complacent. So um, we think this will be a very um, fertile market for, for our technologies. And already, you know, Binding Solutions is engaged with every leading iron ore company in the world who are interested in, in, in exploring how they can produce green pellets. So, um, so it's not theoretical, it's practical that we see the way in which this demand is growing. Right. Do you see yourself as uh, more of a tech company or more of a resource company? Well, we see ourselves um, as a resource company using technology. Um, you know, Cotech, um, which is our name, is about taking technologies and using them for commodities. But the commodity piece in Cotech comes first. Co the co is in the front. It's not techo. Um, uh, so um, technology is our way to unlock value for commodity extraction in a new way uh, for the 21st century. Um, but um, the tech piece um, is, our, is our means to the end. It's not the end in itself. All right. Thank you, Julian. Um, that looks like all the questions that we received so far for today. So I want to thank you for not only taking us through your presentation today, but also uh, launching through a great Q&A session. Uh, I want to also thank, of course, everyone who has submitted questions. Uh, and if you didn't find a chance to ask a question or if you think of one later, you can find today's presentation in the handouts tab on the right hand side of your screen, which includes contact information that you can reach out directly to the team at Cotec Holdings with. You can also, of course, find more information on Cotec's website, uh, cotec.ca. But Julian, I'd like to hand things over to you for some final words before we wrap up. Well, thank you, Cam. Uh, listen, um, again, just thank you for your time. I hope during this 45 minutes, you've got a sense of our ambition, of how excited we are about uh, what we're doing, this, this 
a business which combines commodity extraction technology and green impact ESG investing, I think is a really interesting meeting point. Um, and, um, you know, we've done a lot. We have a great team and, um, you know, watch the space because we have uh, super large ambitions and um, the track record I should give you confidence that we plan to execute on that. So thank you. If you have any other questions, please reach out uh, to us. Um, we're uh, always keen to engage. Um, thanks again.